This right here is where your red iron is actually going to sit. This pocket on the wall, it's a four inch deep pocket, your steel is going to span across and set in that pocket on the other side. So this is bearing on cement wall. There are some places on my foundation here, since I've got this lower end, this is for a garden level. I've got steel beams that will come, say, from this pocket, straight out, and bear on a wood wall at that end. I've got a couple of those. One more here. This one will come across and bear on that wall. We'll frame with 2x6s and put four 2x6s together underneath that beam so it'll be a solid packed out support. That'll bear back onto the cement which in turn bears down to the footing. Now I've also got one that's odd on this basement that's going to bear on these pads here but it's actually going to end on this pad. It doesn't go any further because my stairs come down and turn around that corner. So we're going to put posts on each of these pads all the way back but it doesn't even run to that far wall. It stops short. And they do that to save material if you can a little bit and to leave some more open headspace at that far end so we can run plumbing and electrical around instead of having to bring everything over on some of the larger plumbing that's important. But this one will be freestanding just in the middle of the basement here. So that's an interesting one. Now, anywhere a beam spans too large of a span, there will be a, a, a post. So this one right here is going to come across and bear on a post on a pad right here. You can't see it; it's buried. And a second pad right here you can see peeking through, and then go up and bear on the wall again. So those pads will each have a post set on them. We're not going to order those right now. We're just going to order our steel, get that ordered, and then after we frame the first floor, we'll temp up supports. We'll just use two by sixes to temporarily support the beam. Once we've got that in, we can measure, get an exact measurement, and get our posts exactly how we want them. That's going to keep you from having to reorder a post or weld in shims or something to get away for, to make your beams and posts work if you order wrong the first time. So don't ever order from your plans. Order from the field. Most of these guys turn around orders very, very quickly. My guys turn around in 24 hours, sometimes same day. So you've got some time to order this stuff and get it out. They know you're going to expect it One quickly. One thing you need to do when you're ordering your steel is not just measure from pocket to pocket, because you do measure that for your length, from there to the back of pocket on the other side. Make it a little shy. You can cut that a quarter inch or even as much as a half inch shy if you need to. If it's too big, it's not going to fit. If it's a hair shy, that's okay. They're not super picky on that. Um, your plans, look at what it calls out for bearing. It'll usually call out 3 inch, 4 inch minimum bearing. These pockets are a hair deeper than 4 inches. So we want to make sure we just get our minimum bearing and leave a little extra room to maneuver that in there. The other thing you want to check is the depth of your pocket. Go ahead and measure this top to bottom and check your plans. Make sure that if your plan calls out a 10 inch beam that your pocket's actually 10 inches deep so you don't get a beam out here and find that it doesn't fit. These are all a little bit different depending on how far distance they're spanning, the different thicknesses. These will be noted on the plans by a, uh, a W, a number, by another number. Here you can see how the steel is actually called out. These are the marks put on by the steel company who's provided this for me. This is the same way my order form looked when I called this in. This is a 22 foot 7 inch long beam. They cut these to length. And then it's a 12 by 6. Usually what this will say is W12 by 16 on your plans. Um, but a 12 by 16 means that first one is an actual measurement. It's a 12 inch beam. It's always 4 inches in the other dimension. So they're always 4 wide. But this one is 12 inches high. The 16 is the thickness of the steel. That's a 16 gauge steel. So they're going to be called out a little differently depending on what the engineer spec for it. Over here we have one 15 feet 8 inches. 10 by 15. Try again. I measure this out. That measurement is 10. Look at it on this side. That's 4 inches thick. Again, 15 gauge steel. So that's what that means. So make sure when you're actually measuring for your steel that you double check what the prints say, double check the pockets that your foundation crew poured, and double check your lengths. 
Okay, so now that I showed you how to measure it correctly, this guy here is going to show you what happens when you don't measure it correctly. I screwed up my measurements. I assumed off my drawings that my beam pockets were 6 inches when they were all 4 inch. I measured wall to wall and just did the math, added in the beam pocket, and got 2 inches longer than I needed. So he's taken a uh, 2 inch section off of 3 of the, po the beams that I have. The other two that span down the middle and don't bear on anything um, on the walls are fine. I hope you liked the video. If you did, if you find these helpful, then visit my website, www.60cubits.com. I'm going to keep all my videos updated there throughout the entire process of this home, start to finish. Also, if there's anything in particular you'd like to see, let me know. I'd love to answer your questions in a video or respond to any problems you're having with a remodel or new build. Thanks for watching.